Americans care about being Americans. It's one of our most precious possessions. I came here, I love this country. I want to defend the ideas and the ideals that it stands for. What does a sensible immigration policy look like? Should we make it easier to enter our country and chase the American dream? I am an immigrant, but I came legally. It's not fair. Or should America shut its borders? Arguing in the affirmative that yes, the United States should shut its borders is none other than Ann Coulter. <laughs> Last but not least, we have Cenk Uger. Cenk is the host of The Young Turks and co-founder of The Justice Democrats. He is the author of Justice is Coming. He is a proud American born in Turkey but nevertheless tried to run for the presidency in 2024. To which I say, to which I say, if a man facing 88 charges across four criminal cases can run for president, why not a non-natural born US citizen? Please welcome Jay. Okay, so let's take a look at the initial polling results, please. Interesting. Should the United States shut its borders? 71% are with Sorab and Ann for yes. 29% are with Nick and Jank for no. I guess we should pack it in. Uh, just kidding. I have a lot more than six minutes, but I'll try to keep it to that. Uh, there's a reason millions of people are trying to come to our country. But if they come, we won't be our country anymore. They are leaving their failed cultures. They're coming to a very, very successful culture. What is a culture other than the people who are in it? If just crossing the Rio Grande turns, turns people into freedom-loving Americans, we can, we can stop all wars, just bring the Afghans over, dump them in the Rio Grande, bring the, uh, you know, Iraqis over, dump them in the Rio Grande, send them back. No, a culture is, is, is the people who live in it. We're more than just a land mass. Or the Indians would have written the Declaration of Independence, built New York City, uh, put a man on the moon. Uh, it's like taking a very expensive wine bottle and pouring vinegar into it and then pretending it's the same wine bottle. No, the culture is the people. There are eight billion people in the world, and most of them would love to come here. Four billion of them, which is to say more than half, live on less than $10 a day. Are we gonna take them all, move them all into the confines, the land mass of our country? Well, no, of course, we're going to have to choose. So how do we choose? I think we should choose people who are better than us. People who are better looking, who are taller, who are smarter. <laughs> Let's get our average up. And for the first 300 years, which I'll explain in a moment, that's how our country worked. Uh, but we can't do that anymore because Teddy Kennedy needed a legacy. He was in his room pouting. He wanted a civil rights bill too. His brothers both got to have one. Uh, apparently our entire country is about um, improving the self-esteem of this one Irish Catholic family. So his, his prize, his Kennedy Family Prize was civil rights for the entire world. Thus, we got the 1965 Civil Rights Act. It sounds like you know, the belief of some hippie cult. Every poor person in the world has the right to come here, and we have to take care of them. Um, they, not only does every poor person get to come, but they get to bring their cousins. In, in America, your family is your spouse and your kids. This, this nephew, third cousin, uh, brother-in-law. No, that's third world stuff. This isn't family reunification. We are doing tribal reunification. Um, the difference between pre-1965, post-1965 immigrants is huge. I think when most people say, like Trump, no, we like legal immigrants, or when you, they get weepy about their grandfathers at Ellis Island, they're really talking about the difference between pre-1970, post-1970. That's about how long it took for Kennedy's 1965 act to, to kick in. Pre-1970 immigrants were better than us. They were more educated, they were wealthier, they bought more houses. Oh boy, post-1970 immigrants aren't that at all. 
Uh, they are far more likely to be on welfare. There are a lot of ways to fiddle with the numbers, but um, one of the main ones is counting anchor babies as Americans. Well, okay, most of our welfare is is dedicated to poor people with children. So if the illegal runs across the border, eight months pregnant, drops a baby, and then starts collecting welfare on that anchor baby, who's about to bring in her whole village, um, they, that can be counted as an American citizen on welfare. So what you want to look at is foreign-born head of family versus native-born, US-born head of family. And when those comparisons are made, the foreign-born head of family, 54% collecting government assistance. US-born head of family, and by the way, that includes all of the immigrants that have come in since the 1965 Civil Rights Act, 34%. Now, the reason for this, and the reason we didn't have to have any rules before, um, I mean, there was an ethnic preference for the, for the countries that, that founded and built this country, um, but you didn't really have to have rules. It was hard to get here. You had to have some stamina to even get here. But moreover, there was no welfare. That is the crucial turning point. It was a double whammy in 1965. We're gonna have the great society programs and <laughs> we're going to open up immigration to the third world. In fact, prefer the third world. Interestingly, pre-1970 immigrants, Ellis Island immigrants, 30% of them went home because they couldn't make it in America. No welfare. If you, if you can't do something, you're going to starve or you're going to go home. 60% uh, of Southern Italians went home. Um, the, on, the fewest who went home were the, the, the English, Scandinavians, and the Jews. That was like 5 to 10%. Um, so now we're, we're, we're just bringing in the poorest people of the world with the most dissonant cultures and we have collective lying from the media, the Democrats, the Republicans. The Republicans want the, want the donor money for the cheap labor. Um, I've never seen an issue more lied about. Uh, the media will tell you about every immigrant valedictorian, but will not tell you about the child rape, about the drunk driving, about the human smuggling, about the slavery they're bringing in. Yep, we fought a war to end it. Now we're getting it back. Thank you. Thank you so much, Anne. Uh, five minutes on the clock. Last up is Jank Uber. Hey guys, <laughs> wonderful to be here in Texas with you all. Uh, love the food. Uh, who puts fried egg on a chili? <laughs> I'll tell you who. Geniuses. <laughs> so. Uh, first of all, I got news for you guys. Uh, everyone here is uh, descendants of immigrants. Uh, so that's, of course, true, even if you're a Native American. Uh, you started in Central Asia, uh, where my folks also originally started. The Turks went west, you went east, and here you are. Uh, on the Mayflower, uh, literally every one of those folks were undocumented immigrants. <laughs> Where's your papers? I don't see your papers. You did not come here legally if you came from uh, uh, the Mayflower. Now, obviously different rules at the time. Now, guys, we need immigrants. The, literally, the entire country, 100% of us, are descendants of immigrants. To say that, no, we're not going to do any more immigrants, well, that's preposterous. The only question is, how are we going to do immigration, not whether we're going to do immigration. By the way, if you think it's a great idea to stop uh, anybody else from coming in or going out and close off and let's just stay what we are now, this culture is great. Well, good news for you, the Ming Dynasty agreed almost exactly 500 years ago. That's why they burned all their ships to the ground. It was called the Treasure Fleet. And the Chinese ships at the time were so dominant, they're about 10 times the size of the European ships. And they were, that's why they were economic giants 500 years ago. And after they burned their ships and didn't have anybody going in or out, a 200-year massive slump. And it destroyed their dynasty. Because closing yourself off from the rest of the world is a recipe for disaster. So let's have a realistic conversation about how do we get people in here and do it the right way. Look, I know that there are real concerns about immigration, especially undocumented immigration. 
So let's talk about which of those concerns are legitimate and illegitimate. So, uh, of course, you're not going to be surprised to find out that I think a lot of it is illegitimate. But there are, I'll surprise you with a couple of opinions. I think some are legitimate. legitimate. So first of all, on illegitimate, uh, oh my God, they're criminals and rapists, said the guy who was indicted 91 times and uh, proven in court to have done sexual assault. So there is a criminal and a rapist. It's the guy who said that comment, okay? Now, but that's an anecdote and that's just one awful human being. Um, but when you look at large, it is a stone cold fact that native born citizens, and if you're in that category, sorry, but you are the most likely to be criminals. So undocumented immigrants are only half as likely to commit crime as natural born Americans. And if you're in my group and Sorab's group of documented immigrants, we're the safest of all. We're a quarter. So that, you know what? That means natural born Americans are four times more likely to commit crime than we are. We're just little teddy bears up here, okay? So crime is not true. Oh, by the way, oh, the gangs are coming, and you watch Fox News. Oh, they're all gangs, right? MS-13. Uh, well, there's documentation. And the number of people who are coming in who are coming from gangs are 0.09%. So that's a mirage. It's literally not true that they are more criminal than the average American. So how about jobs? They're taking our jobs, are they? We literally have record low unemployment. And this is not a partisan issue. Both under Trump and Biden, uh, except for COVID obviously, we had really good low unemployment. And if they took all of our jobs, how come unemployment isn't sky high? We have one of the lowest unemployment rates in the whole world. They're definitely not taking our jobs. And guys, who, who are you kidding? Did you all just come from a meat packing plant and they took your jobs? No, did you all just pick lettuce and then come to the Majestic Theater? No, they're taking the jobs that Americans won't do. In fact, Bush in 2006 said, oh, we're gonna get these uh, dastardly undocumented immigrants. They did several raids, and this happens every single time there's a raid. This one was in Stillmore, Georgia. They go and they take out all the immigrants, and guess what happened? Um, the whole town died. It was, about a, it was a small town, about 1,000 people, and once they took out all the undocumented immigrants, the only plant in town collapsed, and the entire town collapsed. They've done that about a half a dozen times, that's why they don't do it anymore, and even Trump barely did it, because it's a terrible idea. So it's not that. So the legitimate part is that, yes, when people came to the border towns, then it was a mess, and that's not fair to the border towns. And in fact, when uh, Governor Abbott first decided to do the buses to the northern cities. I surprised a lot of people on the Young Turks when I said, that's a really good idea. Politically, it was a really good idea, but on top of that, I said, why should the border states carry all of the pain? Why shouldn't it also go to the cities? And if you live in a blue city, as I do, and you really believe in immigration, then you shouldn't have any problem with it. And people are like, well, you can't say that. We well, uh, whoa, whoa, whoa. So it turns out you don't want them either, right? <laughs> so now why am I telling you that when I'm pro-immigration? Because the problem, guys, yeah, I get it. When, so when you put a whole bunch of new people into a new place, yes, will sometimes crime go up. It, they don't know where to go, et cetera. Why, though? Is it because of the nature of who they are? We know through the stats that it is definitely not the nature of who they are. It's because we don't have a rational immigration system. Do you know how many, oh, the immigrants are coming, giant invasions. Do you know how many immigrants we let in as a percentage of the country every year? 0.2%. It's tiny. If those same people came in in a documented way and we got them, you know, a, a pathway to jobs, housing, et cetera, then they wouldn't be milling around in Chicago and New York and the border states, et cetera. They would do this in an orderly fashion and I'm way out of time. You are. So and we're I, I've wrap got it up. so much more to say. I, we're going to get into it right now. Yes. So let's let's take. Okay. Thank you. Let's do a quick round robin of rebuttals, and maybe let's start with you. I talked about how pre-1970, the people were smarter. Maybe they were taller, better looking. Certainly, my great grandparents weren't. So speak to that issue. Are you nostalgic for an imagined past and? obviously pick up on any arguments that the opposing side put out. Well, no, it's just simply a fact that pre-1970 immigrants weren't being supported by the welfare state. Uh, they went back. And also, I mean, um, what percentage people act... What current 
Hold immigrants. On. Please go don't back. interrupt Wait, me. Yeah, I'm ahead. begging you. Um, they act like we're King Canute trying to hold back the tide. No, the 1965 Act was specifically designed to bring in the third world and to stop people coming who had populated this country, who had built this country. Um, side, side note, um, I don't know if it makes you all feel happy to say we're a nation of immigrants and we're all descended of immigrants, fine, but it's not true, unless you mean it in the sense that we're all descended from Adam and Eve, so we all came from someplace. You couldn't immigrate here before there was an established society, there was an American established colony, and then it became a country and fought the revolution, and as of 1990, half of Americans still trace their ancestry Back to those original Americans, it wasn't America before they got here. So, Anne, what is your cutoff when you're thinking about an immigrant? Who, who qualifies Look, and I don't, who doesn't? I don't care if, I'm just saying what this business about we're a nation of immigrants and we're all descended from immigrants, it's, I'm just saying it's simply not true. Um, and yes, no, it was it bad that, it, mean, was bad that it was bad that, it was bad that, it was bad that. Um, FDR turned the shipload of Jews away. Of course it was. Does that mean we have to wreck our country over this? Um, it's also absolutely 100% not true that immigrants commit fewer crimes. This is fiddling with the numbers. There's one famous Cato study where they looked at Texas's prison and they counted up, they counted immigrants only, Im or illegal immigrants, illegal immigrants who had been caught and fingerprinted by the border police because when they're first putting them in prison, that's the only thing they know. Wait a year, and they find out all those others are also illegals. So they were counting as citizens someone who couldn't already be identified as an illegal. Look at the most wanted lists in places like Los Angeles, well, any, any hotbed of, of, of immigration. Look at one place, I mean, this is why I wrote Adios America, because the government lies to us. They will not tell us. Just give us a breakdown on immigrant, illegal immigrant, citizens, in, or, or, or legal immigrant, um, in, in, our, in our prisons, arrested, convicted, they won't tell us that, and I notice my side is the side asking for it. If, um, if prisons, I, a, a I just want to make one last point on last this. Point, point. Prisons need to know the ethnicity of who's in prison because of the gang fights. They keep records and look at the records. It is the top 20 groups in New York are all from Latin America. I, you I, have to get down to just like the 40. Very quickly, okay, okay. we I, would have less crime in America if the Kennedy family had been kept out. <laughs> I will grant that. I put to you guys an issue that Sora raised, which is this issue of wage suppression, because I imagine that you guys have different perspectives on it. Jenk is a progressive, Nick is a libertarian. Is it true? that immigrants, legal or illegal, suppress wages of the middle and working classes in this country? Yeah, it depends. So first of all, as a populist progressive, I'm, I can't stand the corporate rule that we live under. So part of the reason that we have this problem in the first place, guys, is because the companies want cheap labor. And so, uh, and that's part of the reason why our vegetables are so cheap and our food is cheap and et cetera. And so uh, they, they don't, if we had an efficient system, well, then they would have to pay people more, and they don't want that. There's a reason why it's broken. Almost everything in this country is because of campaign contributions. And when corporations give money, the politicians do as they're told. And in this case, they're told, don't fix it. So I understand that, but at the same time, what I've seen, and as a progressive, I care a lot about higher wages for Americans, um, is that it, none of the fear-mongering came to pass. We did not have huge unemployment. We, did not ha we didn't lose our jobs. The wages were not related to that at all. And you've seen the meta studies, and they show that they're not related. So the things that wages are related to are, for example, is there a higher minimum wage? Does that push up other wages? Uh, corporate power. You see, it, it, from 1938 to 1978, uh, productivity in America was sky high, and our wages matched it. It was terrific. Then the Supreme Court legalized bribery, and allowed corporate contributions. From then on, your productivity still soars, but your wages flatline. It's because of corporate power. It has nothing to do with the immigrants, and in fact, waves and waves of immigrants have absolutely proven that to be the case. But Jenk. Okay. Okay. I want to talk about, I, I'm shocked that this far into the conversation, national security came up in no one statement. And one of the things that, that is, 
Well, one of the things that's known is that people are coming through the Darien Gap from all over the world. They're coming from China, they're coming from Russia, they're coming from Syria, they're coming from Egypt, they're coming from Mauritania, they're coming from everywhere. And we don't know who those people are. How much of a concern is that for those of you on the stage? Maybe, Jane, let's start with you. Zero, none. Why? Um, okay. <laughs> So let's let's because talk about you reality. Hate America. Yeah, right? there, let's talk about reality. Because so, that to me seems like the thing that has radicalized a lot of people on this issue. Yeah, they're, they're uh, empirically incorrect. Um, so first of all, um, Fox News will demagogue and go, "Oh my God, there was a prayer rug. There's a Muslim guy coming." First of all, what does that even mean? So there's a Muslim guy coming in. Why don't you just tell me you're a bigot? Like I'm not saying you guys. I'm saying Fox News. That doesn't prove a goddamn thing. What does it prove? Oh, there's a prayer rug. And it turns out, of course, it's not. So ha you know uh, how many terrorists have come in through the border and then uh, done a massive plot against us? To my knowledge, zero. Zero. OK, do you know how many people have done uh, mass shootings in America? Tons and tons and tons. Are we kidding ourselves? The mass shootings that happen every single day, the massacre after massacre, and yes, that's all of us, the people that live in America. There's not this demagoguing about national security is nonsense. If you're talking about national security and giving away our secrets, you do, the real threats come, they are super rich. They come on planes, there are spies. A Chinese, look, it's bipartisan. The Chinese spy who s slept with Eric Swalwell, uh, this Chinese spy, <laughs> it's true. The that, Chinese. by the way, is work that an American won't do. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and by the way, the Chinese spy that was caught at Mar-a-Lago. All you got to do is walk into Mar-a-Lago. Okay, now, Cenk says he has zero concern for national security. And so I want to jump Well, in. I have a few terrorist attacks that were done by, by immigrants. 9-11. Uh, the Orlando Did they come shooting. The they, 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 I, that's I don't, not true at all. Go ahead, Anne. Again, who was talking there? Um, I don't care if they came across the border. San Bernardino, oh, and by the way, it's hard to figure these things out because one of the San Bernardino terrorists, as well as the Orlando Pulse nightclub terrorists, was born in America. Uh, so the media 100% described them as American man, American man. Yes, it's the apple cheeked boy next door. How did this happen? Homegrown. Um, the Boston bombers. And how did they get in? Family reunification. They had some uncle someplace who had come in. Um, basically, every terrorist attack you can think of. Oh, the Times Square uh, bomber, the first um, um, World Trade Center bombing. All of them, they were illegal immigrants under, under the Agricultural Adjustment Act in the 1965 uh, immigration law that allowed agricultural workers um, to, to stay, and they would just lie. The INS knew that 90% of them were fake and just let them in anyway. So there's a, those are a few committed by immigrants. So you know, early but I've got to say, literally none of those people crossed the border. Yeah. Literally if none. You're, you're Who talking, cares? But, no, <laughs> but if, what, if thought, what we're talking, what we're talking about, about, you were talking it's about worse national... that they come in legally. You were talking about national... They crime. were vetted. The Boston Marathon bombers, San Bernardino, so Orlando, then, they were yeah, all wait, wait, wait. vetted. That, that's Our not the question system said, welcome. Okay. No, so now earlier, she's... Wait, earlier, now, hold on. Now you're talking about documented immigrants, right? So I came in the same way. Uh, my uncle's I'm a doctor, about came in, and then, uh, and what did what I do? It goes right to the, your opening statement, Barry, which is, okay, then my dad came in and he started a company, hired hundreds of Americans, helped the American economy, wonderfully productive. Then I started a company, I hired hundreds of Americans. So you mentioned two, uh, Sacramento, I believe, and, and the Boston Bombers, and they didn't come across the border. And, and how about the hundreds of other terrorist attacks? How about the synagogue shootings? How about Pittsburgh? How about uh, the shooting down in El Paso? How about uh, literally thousands of shootings? And you have two documented immigrants and none that crossed the border illegally. There are not thousands. Ahead, jump in. Well, <laughs> a story in the Free Press a few weeks ago by Olivia Rheingold that talked about seven lawsuits being brought in the city of Chicago, almost all by people of color, including from a DEI consultant on the South Side named, I think, Darnell Jones, who said they're giving things away to migrants that we've been deprived of in, you know, in, a, in a poor black community. So speak yeah. to the politics of this a little bit. Yeah, so first of all, I, 
I agree with her, and I'll come back to that. Uh, you're not going to get me to defend Joe Biden too much. I ran against him. Uh, so <laughs> I'll come back to that too. But I've got to address two things. First of all, when I said national security threat is zero, there was gasps in the room. And let's uh, just note for the record that the debate concluded with, well, what if there's one later? So that just literally happened. That was Sorab's point. OK. Now, on this idea of, oh, but the bad countries are, are sending people in, what do you, like when uh, the Irish and the Italian and the Jews were coming in, do you think that they were come from great, amazing countries? At the time, the Irish were starving. They had the Great Potato Famine. They were so, so poor. The Italians were poor, and the Jews were poor. They lived in the worst parts of New York, et cetera. And we want to close it off. If we'd, and, and if we had done that completely and closed it off to those immigrants, it wouldn't be the America that we know and love today. And by the way, it might not, might not even be America. The Jewish physicists driven out of Germany came to America, and we won World War II because of them. If we had done Ann Coulter's strategy at that time, we might not even exist. We That's were a terrible doing Ann idea. Coulter's strategy. It was pre-1970. And, and, and Jenk, you're a progressive. Oh, that's such Cenk, a convenient Cenk, thing to say. Jenk, Jenk, you're, you're a progressive. Between 1923 and 1965, you had the period of restriction of immigration. And that was the period when you had the highest union density in this country. That's the, like the 30 glorious years. That's the New Deal order. And it coincided with relatively, with rel rel in fact, not relatively, pretty strictly controlled No, totally conflating two different issues. So corporate power becomes supersized in 1978 after the Supreme Court decisions of Bellotti uh, and, uh, and uh, Buckley v. Vallejo. So we had a golden period of 38 to 78. We had plenty of immigrants at that point in different uh, parts of that period. Uh, the immigrant does not uh, jive with that, that you're, the story you're telling. It's actually all about corporate power. And why we were doing so well is because we had power in a democracy, the American people. If you cut off all of these countries based on, oh, this arbitrary 1970 rule, right? Oh, well, yeah, it's inconvenient because everybody that came pre-1970 pre is about 98% of the country, right? But these guys, oh, well, the Latinos, they're not good, and the new immigrants are not good because they're coming from really poor countries, and they're not helping. Okay, but the Irish and the Italians and the that, Germans that, and that's everyone great, else like, sort of, that's really great sort of informal, countries. That's great okay, sort of informal Sorab, reasoning. Sorab, 30 seconds then. Okay. Yes, please. Um, you can write off Chicago and New York as just being, oh, it's just big government. And you can try to, say, put a wall around welfare yeah, right after you repeal the law of gravity. That's not happening. Um, but I can give at least two very, very big counterexamples. Minnesota, the cleanest state in the Union. Scandinavians, utterly honest. They dump 100,000 Somalis on them. Immediately, the welfare rolls double. Suddenly, they're having all kinds of child rape, human smuggling, lots of credit card skimming. And I will also give you the largest state in the Union, California, a paradise, a paradise, the most gigantic, um, wealthy, upper middle class. I mean, California had figured it out. They had a balanced budget every year. 20 million Mexicans move in, and now it's a deficit that rivals most of the rest of the world. I think it's like 60 billion. It's preposterous, the deficit. They cannot pay for themselves. Um, so yeah, it actually does make a difference bringing in lots of third world people. I also did not say, like Trump, I didn't say specific countries. What I said is we don't have sink or swim, so we do need to have some way to try to, rep to skim the cream of the world the way we used to, and we sure aren't doing it now. Fair point. I just want to clarify it. So if there was a physicist who was, or some AI genius, and they were coming from a country that of wasn't course. Scandinavia, of course. Of course, but what the other side does is cite, I mean, that Fortune 500 thing, yeah, Peter Thiel, Elon Musk. They cite the, you know, a few really, really yeah, successful right, immigrants who are from, still talking, from South Africa, from Russia. Um, and then, yeah, okay, we get 10 of those and 20 million leaf blowers. No, <laughs> this okay. isn't. Uh, okay, hold on one second. Okay, we are unbelievably running very low on time. Here's what I'd like to do. Before we go to closing statements, what I'd like to do is, the proposition tonight was, should America shut its borders? You could interpret that one of two ways. You can interpret that, should America solve the problem at the southern border, or should America stop immigration 
at all. And I would love for each of you to each take one minute. If you're president of the United States, what would you do? Like, yeah. what does a sensible immigration policy actually look like? Because I don't think anyone on this stage would defend what's happening at the southern border right now. Yeah. So let's get constructive. So uh, I, I love this question. So number one, um, I would hire a lot more Border Patrol. Uh, number two, I would hire a lot more asylum judges. And these are relatively easy to do. And we waste so much money in this country. And that's something that all of us want to do. So uh, that would stem some of the tide. But the best way to stem the tide, but you need that. The second part that you need is for us to do a reasonable, sane immigration policy for documented immigrants so we can get all that new blood in. Look, it's easy to sit, look back and say, well, I would have let the Jewish businesses in. I mean, that's a super convenient thing to say. And I would have let Peter Thiel in, and I would have let Elon Musk in, but I wouldn't have let anybody else in. But you don't know who Elon Musk is. You don't know who's going to be amazing, et cetera. So we need, and we do far too little documented immigrants. But by the way, once we increase the size of the documented immigrants, then if you cross the border, after we increase it and we gave you plenty of opportunity to do it the right way, then you're one and done. Then you, once you cross the border illegally and we catch you, uh, you can never return. So that is a fair trade. And the last thing I would do is a Marshall Plan for Latin America. And the reason that I would do that is not just because it's the moral thing to do, because it's stunningly successful. So when we did it for Germany, Japan, Turkey, and Greece, we turned those, especially Germany and Japan, our, our greatest enemies into our greatest allies. They, become, they became an incredible economic engine that was trading partner for us. The number one reason people are coming is because of economic desperation. The people who used to come here the most were Mexico, from Mexico, Honduras, and Guatemala. But now, the uh, huge fluxes of immigrants, in fact, they stayed relatively the same under Trump and Biden. The extra people are largely from Venezuela and Colombia. Is it because they were all of a sudden got a memo in Colombia? Time to replace the whites. Okay, let's go do a replacement theory. <laughs> no, they were desperate and had to come here because okay. of the situation so, okay, in Venezuela. So, so help those countries and then So a Marshall more, Plan for Latin America, more border patrol agents, more asylum judges, more sensible policy. Nick, one uh, minute. I say 100% of the asylum seekers are fake, phony frauds. It's also the worst way to get people into our country. So, oh, fantastic. You wrecked your country. Why don't you come here? Great idea. If you come from a stable country, a successful country, you can never get asylum <laughs> because, oh, you had foresight and wisdom and you guys got it all together. No, 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 you're out. Only you who have wrecked your countries, Venezuela, case in point. I kept reading in the New York Times how they're all cheering for Chavez. I know it's now Maduro, his handpicked su successor. He promised the poor, um, I'm going to steal from the rich and give it back to you. And every few years they'd reelect him. And the New York Times is so excited. Maybe they could finally get communism that works. Um, and they're all waving their red hats. And he tells them to move on to the golf courses. He actually expropriated all of these farms private farms, golf clubs, and told the poor to m move on to the golf clubs. And they're out waving their red hats for, for, for Chavez. And now they've wrecked their country, so they want to come here and collect our welfare instead. So no asylum cases. I, one other point is, look, most of these laws are already on the books. You know, even if you qualify for a high asylum under the law, you are supposed to be held in detention. You are supposed to be turned away at our border right now, if you could possibly become a public charge. No, instead we're handing them free iPhones and here's your, here's your free, free housing. Um, you can't get in if you um, pass through another country where you could get asylum. I mean, that's another thing about the humanitarian relief. Why do they all have to come here? Can't we help them where they are? Couldn't we help them in a nearby country? All of them have to pass through Mexico to get here, and by law, Mexico takes refugees, so automatically they should be turned away. And the th our third one, actually, there are many more, but a third one that, that is obviously being ignored is they have to show that they've had all their vaccinations. Okay, nobody's being stopped. Nobody's being turned away. Not one per of these alleged asylees should be getting in at the border. So that goes to what kind of laws you're right. You can't write the laws you want because the people enforcing them won't enforcing them. You need a border and a total shutdown on immigration just to get our books in order. Okay.
Many arguments tonight, well made. We're now gonna go to closing statements and we're gonna do it in the reversed order. So Jenk, we're gonna start with you. I'm putting two minutes on the clock. Closing statements for the night. Yeah, please. So guys, uh, I, I think that some on the left uh, do uh, make it racial about immigration and I don't like that and I don't think that that's fair or right. But there is something that's driving this visceral uh, reaction to immigrants when it's not crime or employment or any of the other things that, that, it, that are the ostensible reasons. And that's the resistance to change. And it's tough, you, you know, look, I'm uh, politically uh, progressive, but uh, in nature I'm conservative. I, I don't like change, I don't like taking a new road. I didn't like it when they put a Walmart in my hometown it, because it was new, it was different, I didn't want it, right? So it, it, I, I understand that reaction, but we can't give in to it. Every time a country has closed its borders, uh, it's closed itself to the world. It has been greatly counterproductive. We do not want to do that. When we talk about culture, what is our culture? Our culture is not some thing that was just created, whether it was in 1770 or 1970. It's an amalgamation of all of us. So, I mean, you, the easiest place to see it, of course, is in the food, right? So, oh, what's the most American thing? Pepperoni pizza, that's from Italy. Bagel and lox, that's Jewish. Like, we can go on and on and on. We are the world. That's what's great about America. That's what made us stronger, not weaker. And so you think, well, I know, but the, I, we don't want to let the poor in. My dad came to this country with literally one dollar in his pocket. You don't know who's going to make it. That's what's beautiful about this country. And the people that are coming in, as we've already proven, are not criminals. What they are are people who are desperately trying to give their families a better life. You know what that guy's going to do who went through that perilous, perilous journey and risked his life to get here? He's going to work really hard. He came for the hope. He came for his family. So I don't want them breaking the law. I don't want an out-of-control system like we have now. But if we are open-minded enough and open-hearted enough in this country, we will have the country that we all love and care for that, that we have today. And you would have shut off Abdel Fattel Jandal, Jandali, and if we had gone with the closed border system, and he was a 21-year-old Syrian, unacceptable, we can't have him, he was poor, that's Steve Jobs' dad. And we would have cost ourselves a trillion dollars. We Immigrants in this country are America, and America is immigrants. If we stop that, then we're not even America anymore. Okay, thank, thank you, you so much, Cenk. Next, we're gonna go to Sora. Stop and Coulter. Uh, to pick up on what Sorab said about um, his Mexican classmates not wanting any more illegal immigrants from Mexico. Well, yeah, duh, everybody who came here. Apparently, they didn't want to live in Venezuela. They didn't want to live in Senegal. They didn't want to live in Mexico. And by the way, we've already taken one third of Mexico. So here's a thought experiment for you. If it makes no difference um, what they've done in their own countries in a thousand years, not establishing a stable, uh, a stable government, um, then why don't we just make every Latin American country an American state? Would that make a difference? Would our country be the same country it is? Because even though immigrants, and I mean both legal and illegal, commit a boatload of crime, and you can look at the prison records, you can look at the immigrant hotspots, you can look at the real statistics, even though they collect a boatload of welfare and commit every terrorist attack, that isn't the main point I'm making. It is about saving our country. Um, do we remember Mexico throwing back the Nazi war machine? Why no, they did nothing in World War II. That was the United States of America. It's been the United States of America that has rescued the rest of the world from tsunamis, from earthquakes, from warlords, from starvation, and not by saying, hey, move in. Once this country is gone, and we're heading there fast. It's lights out for the rest of the world. Thank you. Okay. I am not moving here to bias one side. I am moving here so you can see the screen. It is time to see which side won tonight's incredible debate. So, again, just like in the beginning, pull out your phones, don't go on Grinder and Hinge, at least not yet, and text vote 
two to the number on the screen. You're gonna text A, yes, the United States should shut its border to vote for Ann and Saurabh's side, or you will text B for no to vote on behalf of Nick and Jenk's side, keep the border open, keep immigration coming to this country. While everyone votes, I want to extend a special thanks to everyone on the Free Press team, without whom none of this would have happened. So a big round of applause for all of that. So uh, while we wait for the votes to come in, I'm doing, gonna do a quick lightning round of favorite American presidents and favorite immigrants. And who is your favorite historical American president? Probably Washington. Saurabh? FDR. Nick? I have no favorite president. Because there should be no president? I have no favorite president. Jing? FDR. Okay, favorite immigrant to this country, legal or illegal, Jake. My dad. Nick? Uh, I'll say my grandparents. Sora? Uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger, just because I'm a child. <laughs> Ann Coulter? I don't know, where's Mariano Rivera from? I think he's an immigrant. <laughs> <laughs> Last question, if you could recommend a book on this topic or any other, to everyone in this room, what book would you recommend? Nick? Uh, Daniel Okrent's The Guarded Gate, uh, which is a history of immigration restrictionists uh, starting in the late 19th century through the successful passage of the 1924 law. And book? Camp of the Saints, it's banned every place, written by a French philosopher or travel writer in the 70s. It was a huge hit. Um, but now it's banned. It's a fictional book, and I didn't think French people could be funny. It's actually very funny, but very politically incorrect. Sora? Every book by someone who is a true Lone Star State treasure and a national treasure, my friend Michael Lind, whose arguments form my, basically my cheat sheet, but especially his most recent book, Hell to Pay, How the Suppression of Wages is Destroying America. And it's, uh, I mean, the section's not just on immigration, but overall, it's a wonderful book. Jay? Uh, easy, my book, Justice is Coming. <laughs> nice. <laughs> okay, so we started the night with 71% of you voting yes, America should shut its borders, and 29% voting no. After tonight, Let's find out where the results are. I hope I gave you guys enough time to figure it out. Yeah! Wow, okay, I don't know who you're cheering for. Should the United States shut its borders? We're ending the night with some movement. Nick and Jenk's side, 37% are with you. Anne and Sorab, 63% are with you. So a little bit of movement, but we gotta give it to Anne and Sorab in the end for the raw number.